say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen and hello Mrs. Farmer. Hello Mr. Farmer. What do we have in front of us? What is this? This, a lot of people are going to remember this. Do you remember when we rendered lard? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's one step that we didn't do. We had this up here, okay. but you would actually take the last of that, those pieces of lard once it's cooked down right. and you would squeeze every last bit ones. out. Every bit, of, every bit of lard out you could get. What else did they use this for? What? Smashing berries. Okay. Apple cider. Oh. Now you see on the front there's a little hole. This actually just, if it was on a firmer surface, this actually goes down and smashes that. Now we will attach that to something. We're going to make apple cider. That would be fun. But <laughs> not everybody has one of these. Not everybody has a cider press. But I know where you can go get some. We're going to go get some here in a little while. But look at this. This was a common piece of machinery that was in everybody's home. Really? This one is dated 1897. Now I gotta thank Mr. Crawford for this. This was his mother's. That is so neat. And they actively used this. A generation ago, this was on every, nobody had a doubt what that was. Right, that's so, really neat. Isn't that neat? That is neat. Our plans were altered a bit today because it's rainy and nasty and muddy out. Right. We did have a chance to get one cowboy cooking thing going, but we can't get our cameras wet. We can't get us wet right. because we're melt. We're like sugar, right? We can still eat it. We have we can sugar. still eat it. Yeah. Now tonight, we're going to talk about the fact that people used what they had back in the day. Lots of people made cider. They had a cider press. They had one of these. Lots of people made their own hmm. cider. Hmm. So in order to make apple cider, let's go right now to Georgetown, to Evans Orchard. Now they have much newer equipment, but they come to the cider a lot quicker. I hope you bought some cider. I did. Okay, good. Now, because we have cider, we've got some recipes tonight, some really old, old-fashioned recipes. Plus, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. That's People right. are asking for Thanksgiving stuff, like dessert-type stuff, mm -hmm. treat. We spoil ourselves during Thanksgiving. Yeah, we do. We pack on the calories. Because it's okay. Because wintertime's coming, and we're supposed to build up our fat reserves. Exactly. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> Me we've too. We've got some recipes that'll take care of that tonight. But first of all, let's go see how cider is made nowadays, the new fangled way. All right, we're at Evans Orchard. Now, this is, is this technically in Georgetown? Yes, mm -hmm. we're in Scott County. You know what, beautiful place, we've been here before. But, you know, as we go back and look up more traditional stuff, um, apple cider, everybody used to have the old cider press. Now, you've kind of taken some of the work out of that. Oh, yeah, we've, we've kind of automated a lot of it. You, yeah. you know, you got the machinery now, so that just makes life a little simpler. And you know what, everywhere I go, I see your stuff on the shelves. Uh, we go to our favorite store and there it is. So. Talk about the process of making apple cider. Obviously, you have an orchard out here. Yeah. So well, how does it begin? Well, like today, we're, we're making a batch, and we've, you know, we sort our apples and, and grade them out and get the smalls and those type of things out. We'll set those aside. And once we get a few varieties, different varieties, because we want to mix it up as much as yeah. possible. We want it 50-50 sweet and tart. So once we gather all that up, then like today, we, we need to make about 600 gallons. We're getting toward the end of the season, so we're slowing down. So a that's bit. wait a minute. That's slowing down. That's slowing down. <laughs> During September and October, we'll make 12, 1,400 gallons, you know, at least twice a week. Oh, wow. It just, you know, because we'll supply some other orchards with cider, and we wholesale a little bit out. Right. So the process starts, you grade the apples out, then where do they yeah, go? Yeah, we're grading them out, you know, double checking everything. We're washing them again, and then, then they go into our cider room, and there they drop into a big old grinder. Right. It grinds them up, and we've got a continuous flow belt press and we can press about 250 gallons an hour if the apples are nice. That process, it goes between those belts and you know we can set the tension 
to where we want to, you know, try and get all the juice we can get out of it. Right. Then we have a big screen filter that'll gather up and, you know, if we got any pulp that's pushed out the sides and things, it'll screen that out and, you know, we'll do it. And then we've got a holding tank and that's where we kind of mix up, you know, the sweet and the tart and we get it about where we want it. And then we'll flash pasteurize it. And that's, we take it to 165 for like 15 seconds and then bring it right back down. And then we have two big old milk tanks then we'll cool it down and get it down to 32 degrees. So then we're setting, you know, we'll let it settle overnight and the next morning we'll come in and we'll bottle it up and send it where it needs to go. So how far, what's the farthest that, that your product goes in Kentucky? Uh, we used to go to always Cincinnati, oh, wow. to Louisville, to Mount Sterling, to Somerset. We kind of catch wow. it that range there. So you nice. ever run out of apples? Oh yeah. <laughs> no kidding. We get, I mean, during September and October, you're really squeezing, you know, you're, you're grind it up as much and you don't want to grind up your really your best apples but there's been days you've had to throw an extra bin or two in there to get what you need but most of the guys you know we got some other orchards that'll bring us sour apples we'll buy them mix it in with all of our stuff and then sell them cider back what are the best kind of apples to use for apple cider and your in your favorite yeah well i mean you know you got your john of golds jonathan's a little bit of gold and you don't want a ton of it and then we've got gold rush which is a tart apple that's probably to me is one of the best, right. you know, because it just puts a nice, clean, tart taste in it. You do make vinegar too, but you say not as much. Not, there's not as much demand. There's not as much demand. I mean, What's we, the added process? Well, we'll just, we'll just take our regular cider and we'll put it in, you know, in a barrel and let right. it sit, you know, kind of turn to wine, and then it'll go on to vinegar, you know, and wow. we can, you can speed it up a little bit if you just put a little air bubbles in there, you know, just to kind of keep it going. But uh, we'll let it sit just naturally. We got another room, we'll take it and put it in. And, and it's either, you know, a restaurant guy, we, we'll bottle some and age it in a bourbon barrel to get a little bourbon flavor to it. And the restaurant guys really like that. And then we've got farmers that add it to their feed, you know, to help their cattle, so. Helps their gut. Yeah, and they'll buy 50 gallons at a time. You know what, we, we found over time, you think back to your grandparents. If you walked in around dinner time, you always smelled vinegar mm. in relish or, or, or pickles. They always had some kind of relish dish where they had vinegar. Vinegar was around all the time back in the day. They're finding out all these health benefits now. I take it daily, you know, yeah. apple cider vinegar, and I'm finding out that it does great things for your digestive system. Yeah, and that's and we have a lot of customers. That's you know they'll come in by a gallon time. It's it's just another thing we can use for apples. All right, now obviously it's the time of year, it's fall, it's beautiful out here, but what can people expect to see if they come to your place of business? Well, see, I mean, we're into, you know, Halloween's done, but we still have a great variety of apples, you know, and we'll run those, and we'll have apples probably till Christmas. Right. We still got our play areas there to open, you know, we still have all that. You can still go out and just take a walk through the orchard or walk all the way down to the garden area, so people just enjoy getting out and walking. And you know what? There's all kinds of Christmas presents around for folks. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we, Christmas shopping right here. Yeah, and, and Jenny and them, you know, we, we do a lot of apple uh, pies, different types of pies for Thanksgiving. So, right. Well, thank you so much for taking time out today. We, we love to see this operation going on back here, and we'll see you in the future. All right. We'll look forward to it. Thank you so much. This next dish, it's old. Yes, it is. I'm talking really old. Yeah. It goes back to the 20s and 30s. Now, you know, what pork we don't take and turn into sausage, mm -hmm. some of the lesser cuts of meat, we do like our ground pork. Now, we know where this comes from. Right. Came off the back a lot. So it's delish. And we smell them every day when the wind blew from mm -hmm. the west. I like it better like this. So there it is. And you know, when we were in traveling around different places, especially in Hawaii, yeah. one of the best recipes I ever had was with pork and Japanese eggplant. It's delicious. Which you can buy anywhere. Right. This looks simple, but with the spices, the Asian spices, oh my goodness, they're so some good. of the best food I've ever had. They used pork a lot over there, didn't they? They do. A lot. And you know what? We do too. So you can get this in the store. And we've also made our own sausage. Mm -hmm. We've made our own bologna. We're still getting lots of mail. Somebody said the other day, hey, that was a 10 out of 10. He's actually making it and freezing it. Oh, good idea. But a lot of people like our bologna recipe, which is old fashioned and mm -hmm. cool. So that's some of the stuff you can go back and look for. But we do have quite a bit of ground pork. Let's talk about real quick. Now this has been outside with coals on it. All right, let's talk about, this is, this should have been a cowboy cooking dish, mm -hmm. but you can do it in your oven as well. That's let's, right. let's give a real quick overview of that. And then we'll get on to the really cool Thanksgiving 
Desserts. Desserts. <laughs> Tell us what you did. Well, with the sweet potato, and what this recipe is, is mainly layered sweet potato and apples. Right. Real so thin. Very thin. So I cut these as thin as I could. Mm -hmm. And I actually had one big sweet potato. I'd probably take about two of these, two or three, and I had three apples. Right. And so what I did was I started with the sweet potato, thin slice, made a layer in the bottom of the pan, and I put salt on it and, and onion salt also. Mm -hmm. Then I did a layer of very thin apples, and salt, and onion powder. I did three of each all the way to the top. So then you just have your layers, the thin layers. That's all you got. Everything layered, you know, six layers pretty much. Now the old recipe calls for onions, but the onion powder gives it that little right. bit of nice, it's more convenient. Minced onions or right. whatever if right. you want to put more. So then I took about a half a stick of butter, mm -hmm. melted that. I took a third a cup of maple syrup and a third a cup of apple cider and kind of got that all melted maple together. Maple syrup. Yes, maple syrup, cider, and butter. Melted it all together, poured it over the top of all this mixture. Let it cook for one hour at 350. Right. Then after that, we pulled it back out. That's when we took the pork and I put about a quarter cup of breadcrumbs in that. Mm -hmm. And stirred it in, poured it on the top, cooked it another half hour, and we've got sweet potato main now, dish. Whatever I'm not call kidding it. you. This stuff is fantastic. It's got that old-fashioned taste. It, it reeks of history. Yeah. And when I say reek, I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> It is good. It's unique, isn't it? It is isn't really it? unique. So we talk about try some grub you've never tried before. This is one of those things that they were making back in the day. It would During fill the up. depression, mm -hmm. you know, you got sweet potatoes, apples, pork. You got a sweet and kind of a sour taste going on there, and it is absolutely wonderful. And the apple cider it fills your belly. Now that smell right there is so fantastic. I know. This is not normal. You're not <laughs> thinking maple syrup, apple cider, and butter. Sweet potatoes, apples, pork. But please, please, give this a shot. And it's a great cowboy cooking dish as well. Mm. That's interesting, all those flavors unfold. It's a sweet, and, uh, but you got the pork and the salty. Isn't that good? That is absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. Way to use your sweet potatoes and your apple. <laughs> so next time you got a sweet potato and apple sitting on the counter? Yeah. You know, I've, I've tried to remember what my great-grandmother parrot I try to remember what her kitchen looked and smelled like. I always smelled apples. I always smelled vinegar mm -hmm. or relish. I always smelled just a hint of a match from the stove that she lit. I right. just a tiny bit of gas you'd smell. I mean, I remember those smells so vividly. And I remember one time saying, hey, Timmy, she said, do you want some buttermilk? I'm like, well, she, you know, I was expecting the milk taste. Yeah. So she handed this big glass of milk, and I'm like. Took a jet. <laughs> did you take a big swig? Oh, it was so, yeah. at the time, it was so horrible. But she loved it. Mm -hmm. She would drink buttermilk like a lot of people drink milk. I'd rather cook with it. Now, we're going to eat all of this later, I have no doubt. But let's really cut to the chase here. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. People right. want us to do some Thanksgiving dishes. We're inside. It's raining. We can't go outside, so we're stuck inside anyway. So we're sitting there the other day, and I'm thinking, okay, I remember an old recipe, as I was looking through these old recipes, mm -hmm. that called for sweet potato pie. Right. But there was a butternut squash sitting up on the counter. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let's take that butternut squash and replace that with a sweet potato pie. And some pecans. And pecans. Let me tell you what. First of all, everybody's used to pumpkin pie. So what? Right. Make you a butternut pecan pie. It's a mix of everything. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Let's, let's set this out away and get started on that. Okay. Then we're going to follow up. We're going to have dessert with a, on top of dessert. <laughs> we got something that's just absolutely wonderful that you can't beat on top of that. We got that idea from Evans Orchard the other day. Whenever we go over there, Kelly would always buy these donuts. Mm -hmm. She can't resist Now, them. I would suggest you just go over there and get them, or you want to try to make them yourself? I think we pulled it off. I think we did too. Let's get this cleaned up. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. We run over a cat going to Parson, West Virginia. Cat run out the road. Lardo run over it. And so there's a house where we stopped and pulled out. I went up and knocked on the door. Old boy come down. I said, boy, we run over a cat out here. Thought maybe it might be your cat. He said, what's he look like? I said, well, he's about that thick, about that Hey, long. don't do that. <laughs> no, I said, I said, he said, what's he look like? I said, well, he's probably... Quit. Quit doing that. He said, no, I mean before you hit him. I said. <laughs> Let's do that song. Well 
All her friends have got one. My wife wants one too. A full length fur coat and ain't nothing else gonna do. She says she looks pretty, and I'd be proud of her if I just break down by her fur. Well, it's got me kind of thinking how I go swing that kind of deal. Ain't no way I'd afford it, and I'm too afraid to steal. But the problem sought itself one night like a boat out of the blue. Jumped right out in front of me on Highway 32. That big old German Shepherd, my truck he didn't see. He's up in dog heaven now, but his hide belongs to me. Big one. Well, I worked down in the basement six months every night. Mostly trial and error at first, but I finally got it right. Wrapped it up in a Walmart bag, carried up there at her. You all seen him eye light up when I handed her that fur. Wish puts on her new fur coat and hang from to her knees. But she'd been complaining lately, said her closet's full of fleas. She don't know that Fido is wrapped around her tight. She's really putting on a dog when she goes out tonight. She's been feeling kind of poorly. She's thought I'll run over that cat. She's going to feel a whole lot better when I show her new fur hat. Let's move along and get this recipe rolling because this is absolutely delicious. Now you think about pecan pie. Mm-hmm. Delicious. It's got some maple syrup in it, you, right. brown sugar. But man, the butternut squash has such a wonderful flavor. If you've never tried one of these, and most of you have, do a little twist on your friends this time. Instead of having a pumpkin pie, do your butternut squash. That's Absolutely right. wonderful. And right, you're gonna take just enough of this to make about a cup. You're gonna cut up in pieces. I obviously take the seeds out. Mm -hmm. Leave the skin on, half hour, boil you know, it, so on and so forth. Think about mashed potatoes, right. basically. So when it gets the right texture, pop that skin off, mash it up, and we got a cup butternut squash right there. And we actually added a little butter to that and salt and mashed it up like you, like like, you like mashed potatoes. Yeah, like a mashed potato. Now this this old recipe called for like leftover sweet potatoes that mm -hmm. you might have sitting on the plate and so on and so forth. But switch it out with this and you got something special. Let's start with the butter and the, usually let's do the butter and that brown sugar first, okay. get those together. Okay. Squash? Now, cream. now let's do some squash. For some eggs. Eggs. All right. Then we come up with not our maple syrup, but we're gonna do about a third a cup of that, right? Yep, third a cup. All a little right. bit of salt. You know, a little salt really when you're when you got something sweet, it really kind of sets it off. Yeah. Let's go a teaspoon of vanilla. All right. Mm, let's make my mouth water. Let's stir that up. Now, let's go ahead and throw those pecans in if you want. Now, let's let's preheat our oven to 425, and we're going to do that for 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes, yeah. And then we're going to drop it down to 325. I'm going to do that for 45 minutes. This is absolutely wonderful. Now, we're cheating tonight, but Nikki normally makes her pastries out of, and her pie shells, so on and so forth. Lard, got to have lard. Uh, lard. Now, we rendered our own lard, and she uses that, and for some reason, it's magic. So, lard, like I said, they're finding out that it's actually very healthy. If it's the good leaf lard right. from a pig that's been pasture raised. So that pop that in the that's oven. That's ready to go. About an hour we'll have us some pie. All right. Hmm? I like it. What's that look like? What's that look like? Donut. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now, this is a very easy recipe and it's very delicious. We're going to use some Kentucky stuff here. Mm -hmm. Kentucky apple cider, which That's we right. just got. L8. Delish. But this is pretty easy. Let's, let's start with the white stuff. Let's get one egg. Okay. A tablespoon and a half of butter. We're just going to whisk all this together. Let me squeeze all that butter out of my pan. A quarter cup brown sugar. 
right. We're just being decadent tonight. Mm-hmm. We're out of control. That's right. It's Thanksgiving coming up. That's right. We these can eat people it. are going to love these recipes. Trust me. Half a cup of salad. All right. Boom. Now that really adds a nice taste to these. And then we're going to come up with a quarter cup of L8. That gives you some sweetness and a little bit of ginger flavor. That's right. Let's come back with one and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Let's come back with a half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon nutmeg. I love nutmeg. I do too. And then half a teaspoon of cinnamon. All right, it's all in there. Oh, that smells so good. And just like that, boom. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees at this point. Get it ready. Now, this is a nonstick pan, but we're gonna put just a little bit of our ham organic olive oil in there. We're gonna get these about three quarters full. <laughs> that is the smell of heaven right there. I'm just it telling smells you. good. I could eat just the bed. All, All right. right. Pop them in. Pop them in. So look what we got. You let them cool look a little at bit. There. Perfect. Look at those. <laughs> now, if that's not like perfect wow. enough, we got some, oh my, look at that. We've got some Cinnamon and sugar, right here. I like that. Wish we had smell of vision This is breakfast. We shave these for breakfast. <laughs> no, they're not. They're for right now. Okay. I bet the grandkids would love these. You think? Yeah, I think we should make these for them. I think we'd have to make a bunch of them or we wouldn't get any. That's true. Look at that. Yum. You know what it smells like? You know one of those candles? Oh, yeah. Smell that. That's like oh, potpourri, does. doesn't it? What do you think? Do I get some? Wow. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, wow. I need some coffee. That would go perfect with coffee. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely wonderful. That's really good. I'll eat the rest of that in a minute, but let's cut a piece pie. of this pie. All right, I'm going to take a big honking piece of this. What do you think? I like that. That's really good. You get a bunch of flavors in there you don't normally get. It's nice and creamy. Wow. I really like that. That is absolutely wonderful. Delish. Makes a good pie. (laughs) If you have leftovers at Thanksgiving dinner, turn it into pie. I'm not a big pie fan. That really is seriously ridiculous. That is good. That just keeps on getting better. The aftertaste. That. These are beautiful, they're wonderful. And I don't eat a lot of sweets, but sometimes you really want that. Let's make some coffee and go up to the house and eat all of it. That's what I'm talking okay. about. You know what, we have 82 bazillion recipes yes, we do. that you can take a look at. How to's, all kinds of stuff. Where would you go to find those? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. You can download these recipes and whatever. Print a picture with a yeah, recipe yeah. right on it. And boom, take it, hide it so everybody will think it's yours. That's right. Or you can tell them you got it from us. That's right. So when you go to YouTube, this is important. Go to Shows, then okay. YouTube, and click Subscribe. Okay. Then it lets you know when something new comes out. Oh, that's good. And we have so much stuff out there, and we thank you so much for tuning in. And our Facebook page. What do you have to do to get on there? That's not difficult. You go and click, boom, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Click Like. You're there. We can talk. You can share your recipes with us Monday mornings. We ask everybody what they've had, and they take right. pictures. Oh, that's neat. It is so cool. And they show us what they ate that weekend. Sometimes they've... And we tell them we, they get extra points for cooking our recipes. That's right. Yeah, see some of the <laughs> spreads these people put out there. So, regrettably, our half hour's up. Yes, it is. Hopefully, we'll be outside next week, but there's a lot of rain coming up. We're usually about a week behind, so you're going to remember this wet period. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get dried back up and can get outside. But until then, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. Oh, we're going to destroy I don't know this. what to eat. I'm going to have some right. donut. <laughs> okay, I'll eat the pie. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to... CKY, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.